Since Easter Sunday, the church has gathered around scripture, witnessing to the disciples' accounts of Jesus' resurrection appearances and moments from Jesus' life which speak to us of the power of resurrection. First, we gathered around the stories of the risen Jesus appearing to the disciples. We heard of them gathered together in a locked room when the risen Lord appeared among them, showed them his scars on his hands, and breathed his peace upon them. Then we heard the story again of him appearing to the disciples, offering his hands and his feet, and then sharing in the eating of broiled fish. For the past month, we've gone back to stories that occurred prior to Jesus' death and resurrection, which the disciples and the church can reflect on and understand in new ways. Like Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd, I am the true vine. Or Jesus' long discourse on abiding and love. Last Sunday, we heard that Jesus prayed for us. It was also Ascension Sunday, last Sunday, where the church remembers that the risen Jesus blesses the disciples and promises that they will be given the power of the Holy Spirit before he then ascends into the clouds and vanishes from their sight. Today's Gospel reading comes from the 15th and the 16th chapters of the Gospel of John, And it's a portion of Jesus' farewell discourse with the disciples. You are most likely most familiar with the portion of this discourse that we read during Holy Week, particularly on Maundy Thursday. This is the text when we hear about Jesus washing the disciples' feet and giving them a commandment that they love one another. Today we hear the part of the farewell discourse which speaks to the Spirit. So hear now God's holy word as it comes to us from the Gospel of John. Jesus is speaking. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember what I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I did not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The scriptures for today, the day of Pentecost, explore aspects of the multidimensional Holy Spirit. The Acts reading remembers a very dramatic event in the life of the community, one that as we explored with the children involved rushing winds, tongues of fire, and the unification and clarity and understanding among the community, no matter what language was being spoken. The Gospel reading presents the Holy Spirit as the advocate, the one who comes in place of Jesus and enables testimony on Jesus' behalf and the continued work of Jesus when he is no longer physically present. Both scriptural texts address the gift of the Holy Spirit 
though their interpretations of this gift are somewhat different. Pentecost, the liturgical day that the church celebrates receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, is a good time for us to reflect on two questions. Who is the Holy Spirit? And what might we expect from the Holy Spirit today? The Gospel of John reading, I believe, helps us in the first question. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Greek word is transliterated paraclete, which the NRSV translates as advocate. In antiquity, a paraclete was a mediator, a comforter, and a counselor. The paraclete was one who instructed, assisted, and entered pleas on behalf of someone else. When Jesus says that the Holy Spirit is a paraclete, he's letting the disciples know that they will not be left alone even when he is no longer physically with them. Instruction and assistance for the community of faith will continue through the Holy Spirit. In the physical absence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will intercede on the community's behalf. The Apostle Paul articulates this presence in Romans 8 like this. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the very presence of God in our midst, continuing the work of Jesus in and among the people after the risen Christ ascended into heaven. The Gospel of John articulates some very specific work that the Spirit will be about in community, but not wanting to be too didactic, I offer for you a one-word summary. Relational. The Spirit's work is showing and telling the community how to be in relationship with one another. The Spirit's work is bringing people into relationship with the community and with God. And the Spirit's work speaks truth to the ways of the world and how Jesus would have his disciples be in the world. Given the relational nature of the Holy Spirit, then what might we expect the Holy Spirit to do among us today? Forgive me if you have heard me tell this story before. I know that some of you have. But it is a Holy Spirit moment that has been on my mind. It's been on my mind a lot, uh, really since the fall, when the violence began to erupt in Israel and in Gaza. But then again on Tuesday, when we were gathered together as a worship staff, and I learned that the Trinity Handbell Choir would be sharing the prelude of Blessed Assurance, um, well, the Spirit brought forth this memory yet again. So when the church went to Israel back in 2016, one of the stops that we went to was the church at Gethsemane. And having finished the tour, our very own Bob Coates went out of the church, and the church outside of the church was sort of a porch that surrounded. And he went out, and there he noticed a group of fellow pilgrims, about 30 to 35 of them, they were dressed in colorful wrapped dresses, and they wore turbans and beautiful headpieces, and they were singing. Singing in what Bob thought at a distance was their own native language. Bob being a singer, he drew closer. And as they sang together, Bob noticed that indeed they weren't singing in a foreign language, but rather they were singing Blessed Assurance in broken English. Well, as more and more of our group got through the church and they saw Bob and then saw others, more and more voices began to join together in this choir so that by the time I walked out of the church, I felt like I was walking out into the United Nations choral concert. It was glorious. And perhaps what was even more glorious than the sound of their voices was that when the song ended, Everyone erupted into smiles and began hugging one another. 
these pilgrims from Cameroon, Africa, and Tampa, Florida, began hugging and embracing one another as if they were lifelong friends that had not seen each other in a very long time. Given the relational nature of the Holy Spirit, what might we expect the Holy Spirit to do today? This past week, as the community has walked through the unexpected death of our beloved friend, Patricia Peed, John Debevoise and I were again reflecting on the number of times that we have people in their grief share a powerful experience of God's presence as a sign of God's care for them and the person they are grieving, and the messenger for them is a bird. When meeting with Patricia's family this past week, her daughter, Mary Pat, shared with us an experience about the morning after Patricia had died, and she gave me permission to share with you. She shared, all of those who had been in the hospital room with mom at her death were gathered together, this time in a living room. We were gathered and our hearts were heavy with grief, but there was a beautiful soft light that filled the room when suddenly at the window, a rather large brown bird appeared. We couldn't tell what kind of bird it was because she only showed us her belly, but the bird was dancing along the window. She was fluttering and hovering, appearing to be looking inside at those gathered. It was a sign of peace to us. The very next day, a bright red cardinal flew onto a sign and looked at Mary Pat. Mary Pat reports it was a striking moment, her looking this bird in the eyes and feeling the bird looking back into her eyes. Cardinals were my mom's favorite, said Mary Pat. Earlier this spring, when PCPC member and friend Steve Barber died, I went to the Barber home to meet with his wife, Laura. It was a beautiful spring morning, and when I arrived, Laura was out front. And as we walked back to their beautiful backyard garden, she asked me if I had seen the cardinal that was on the roof of the car when I arrived. She shared that she had spent the morning outside tending to some odds and ends when she first noticed this bird. And as she moved around the yard, the bird moved with her, staying near to her. And she said that she felt glimmers of peace for the first time since Steve had died. The Holy Spirit connects us to one another in a way that transcends time and space. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in God's providence and in the work of the Holy Spirit. Mary Pat and Laura's stories bear testimony to the continual work of the Holy Spirit in the world. It never ceases to amaze me when people share these moments Moments that are such a gift and bear witness to the power of God at work in our lives. There is always something surprising about the number of times that people share these powerful bird encounters. And yet, really, we shouldn't be all that surprised. After all, all four of the gospel writers testify that at Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form the form of a dove. Given who the Holy Spirit is, what might we expect the Holy Spirit to do among us today? To bind us to one another, to continue the work and the ministry of Jesus Christ, and to bear witness to God's deeds of power. May all glory, honor, and praise be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.